we are on the home stretch. Well done for sticking with the series. It's uh, it's a lot of work, a lot to uh, retain, but uh, well done for sticking with it. Now, a couple of things before we jump into compositing, the fun compositing stuff. Um, I noticed a couple of things that I could tweak to the lighting just to improve it. And it's important we do it now because what we're gonna do next relies on the lighting being uh, correct. So um, the first, is I noticed that the, the light rotation, it would be a little bit better if I rotated it so it's almost like a 90 degree, like completely side on to the donuts. Um, so that's pretty simple change. The other one I noticed is that I'm getting this like kind of ugly bounce light coming off this, uh, both the plate and the table. So to fix that, I can just move Right, go into edit mode, edge select mode, select the edge of this window. And then if I just drag it, you'll see that the light just disappears off the front there. And now I have controlled the light. Now the other thing, speaking of control, I noticed looking at this wall, like I was trying to tweak it and just try to improve it, but this is like a huge uh, source of light, right? And so if you look on our donut, it's not very controlled, right? I could either, if I, if I wanna fill in this space, I could increase the brightness of that wall, but you can see it just, it throws light just everywhere and I don't really have any control over it. So, change my mind, let's not use that as a fill source. Let's just drop the value to zero. So there is now no light coming off of that wall. It is a black void, um, which is actually pretty, I mean, that's like a photographer holding up a black uh, fill card next to a face. Uh, and instead, <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, quick break there. <clears throat> Had to get a drink of water. Instead, I'm gonna add in a lamp, okay? So I'm gonna shift right mouse click so that I drop it on the ground here in front, uh, sorry, to the side. And then I'm gonna go shift A and I'm gonna add in, not a point lamp, not a sun, but an area lamp. Okay, so this is, this is what it looks like. It's just, it looks like a plane, right? Flat square thing. And it casts it in the direction of that arrow. So I wanna rotate it along the Y axis, just holding down control. And in the top left, you can see we get a 90 degree angle. So that's what I'm looking for. And then the size of this, I wanna drop the size in the setting there. Okay, so I just can go really small actually. And now if I pull in close with rendered view mode, we should see a lot more control over where that fill light goes. All right, so I can pull it in nice and close. Right, now that's obviously way too bright. So I'll just now dial that back like so. And I can now pull it forward so that I get the fill light exactly where I want. But that's, you know, that's 3D, right? You try out an idea, you're like, okay, that could work. And then you look at it and you're like, eh, maybe not. You know, I'll try a different one. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna give it a bit of a yellowy tint and that's better. Awesome, okay, so. Now we can do some compositing. But first of all, what is it? Well, the compositor is a way to add effects to the final render. So that could be everything from a simple color grade to like really stylized uh, renders. So in our case, we're gonna use it to add glare to better emulate a camera. That's really the purpose for this tutorial. So at the top of your screen, click on the compositor tab. So this will arrange your screen again, disorient you for a moment. Um, but yeah, wouldn't you believe it? It's another node screen. <laughs> so click use nodes at the top there. For whatever reason, they always appear off your screen, um, at least in my case, maybe it, it appears on yours. But if you middle mouse up or just scroll down, you should be able to see it. Or you can just hit the home key as well and that'll bring it into focus. So it's actually pretty similar to like geometry nodes in that on the left hand side, this is your original, like what you've started with, your original render. And then on the right hand side, um, it's going to be your final output. Like that's what's uh, gonna be saved to an image. And then in between here, you can put whatever it is you want. You could put um, a, a color grade, you could do some post-processing glare and shine and things like that. Um, but before we can see anything, because normally you would see your results here, we can't for two reasons. The first is we haven't done a render, okay? It's not enough to just look in like rendered view mode here, right? This is just like a temporary view whilst we're moving around. We have to do a proper render by hitting F12. But if we did one right now, 
we would have, we'd be waiting a while <laughs> because the maximum samples is 4,000, which is maybe it's like probably pretty good for like film animation production quality, but it's overkill. And especially for, um, for this, like we're just doing some test renders. So let's set it to a hundred samples and that'll do it way faster. So now let's hit F12 on that. There we go. So that came through for me, seven seconds. Again, I got four 3090s. It'll probably be a little slower if you're on a laptop, but yeah, just, you know, be patient. It'll, it'll come through. Now go to the compositing tab and we still can't see it because we need to add a viewer node um, and connect it to this. Um, and you can do that just by holding down control, shift, and then left clicking on your render layer. And now we have a viewer node and in the background we have our render. So some people find it like a little weird to have the render in the background. You can move it around just by holding down alt and then middle mouse button and then middle mouse button will move your nodes around. So alt, middle mouse button for the background and then uh, middle mouse for the nodes. Anyways, as a very quick example, let's do a simple color adjustment. So adjustment, color balance, right? Drop this in here. Now, the if you just dropped it into your viewer node, then this would be just what is gonna be shown in the background here, but it wouldn't be saved in your render until it went through your composite uh, node. But for just this quick effect, it's, uh, it's good enough. So this is a, um, graders know exactly what this is, but it's for, uh, on the left-hand side, your, your blacks, right? Uh, your midtones is in the middle and the right-hand side is your highlights. So if I wanted to make, uh, you know, I don't know, like a cooler midtone and then like a warmer highlight, right? And then, I don't know, something for the blacks, like make it more green. I don't know, just make something horrible. You could do it here. You could make simple color adjustments, you could do it there. And your, your original render hasn't changed. This is just a post-processing a step. But actually on the note of making things look uh, more contrasted and punchy, I wouldn't actually bother with the color balance node. We used to, but uh, now Blender has some pretty good color management. So I'm gonna hit Control X on that to just remove it, but retain its connection. And then if you go down in your render settings to color management, uh, there is, um, a look uh, drop down here. So if you set this to a uh, high contrast, that's exactly uh, at the same as like what we were doing there, like trying to like increase the highlights or reduce the midtones. It's a very common thing to try and make something look punchier. And these looks will do that, but do it really well. Um, a lot of people make the assumption that this is like, you shouldn't use these or it's gonna like mess with the colors in some way. And like other applications, true. Um, a lot of uh, like art apps, they just, you know, you, you use one of their contrast settings and it just starts like clipping highlights and things. But this was designed by Troy Sabotka who understands color science and color management. So it's a proper S curve. You won't have any clipping going on. Um, so I use this all the time. Usually the one I go for is a medium high contrast look um, and it just makes a really nice looking result. By the way, just a quick mention, in 4.0, this version of Blender, we switched the view transform fruit to AGX, which creates more realistic uh, looking images because previously it was on Filmic and it looked like this. And you can see the difference is AGX has, it just looks more real. Um, but the reason for that is that Filmic was, uh, and actually the same with Aces right now, the, the film, like the, the, the one, the Academy, all the people in VFX shoes and everything, it's got this same problem. But when uh, you've got color, the more exposed a color is, it should actually start to desaturate. But what Aces and what Filmic was doing is that it was making that color more and more saturated. So that's why these bright colors here are just starting to get ugly, right? but AGX fixes that and it starts to behave more like film where it des desaturates those colors um, as it exposes for it. So very cool um, and I'm glad that they've got that. While I'm here as well, I'm just gonna increase the exposure a bit. Um, it's gonna blow it out a little, anyway, we'll fix it a bit with the lighting uh, later, but anyways. Okay, back to the compositor. So one thing that I often use a compositor for is for uh, what you see in the real world, which is glare, right? If you've got a shiny metallic object, a bumper or something like that, you wanna have that, that starburst, right, coming off it because that's what you see in the real world. You see it both with your eyes, like if you squint at something in the distance, you'll see like, uh, yeah, like this kind of like starburst around like a, a street light at night. That's actually because of the eyelashes on your eye. But on a camera, it's for a different reason. It's because of the optical elements. It's kind of like refracting around itself and it's creating this uh, 
Starburst look. I don't understand it fully, but I know that it's an artifact which has artistic use as well. Um, so we are going to add it. It is a little fiddly, I'll be honest. Like other software, they just have a button and you just like adds the bloom and the glare and stuff. We, we have to do this for now. So shift A, I, we probably could if more people donated to Blender, right? We could have stuff like this, but anyways. So not to guilt you all, filter, glare. Okay, and that was shift A by the way, same hotkey works everywhere. Um, and drop this in. Okay, so we've got little starbursts. We've only got four which is not ideal. We want as many as we can get really. So drag it up to 16, that's better. Now uh, there's two values here you really wanna change. The first is the threshold. That'll decide how much of the image is affected. Like as I drag this up in value, it means only the really bright stuff is gonna be affected. If you dragged it really low, then like everything is gonna give off a starburst and it's not gonna be uh, what you want. And the other one is the mix value. So if you drag it all the way to one, then it's gonna be just the, just the effect by itself. If you drag it all the way to minus one, it's going to be the original render. So if you wanted a nice blend between it, you could go like a minus 0.9 or something, and then you've got the starburst over the top of the original render. But if you wanna blend this with something else, I find it best to actually drag it, the mix all the way to one so that we're just looking at the effect by itself. Um, I can then also, let me just quickly adjust the threshold so that I'm only getting it in the really bright places. Yep, that's good. And then um, I can blend it with another effect that I want. So I'm gonna hit uh, Control Shift D and that's gonna duplicate it, but it's gonna keep it connected to my render layer here. And then this one, I'm gonna make the fog glow because looking at reference, it's not just the starburst, but it's also got a uh, like a glare, like this glow, blurry glow coming off it. So the fog glow is that look, right? It's just that. Um, and let's increase the size, I think. And let's set the quality to high. Do we need high quality? Yeah, I think it looks better. All right. All right, so first to blend this all together with the, the render layer, what we wanna do is, uh, just like you would do in Photoshop, if you would use a like a blend mode, you would set the blend to screen or add. We can do that by blending with Shift A, color, mix, mix, color. Okay, so this, we're gonna drag in both of our glare effects. And then instead of mix, we're gonna set it to add. So that will just basically ignore the black values and it will just take the white values and combine them on the top of each other. All right. Now the way Blender works, unlike Photoshop, where it's like top to bottom, in this case, it's bottom input up. So this factor value will, de will define how bright the bottom input is, okay? It's a little weird, I guess, in that respect, but so this is the strength of that bottom input. Um, yeah, so when you're blending something and you wanna control it, you just put it into the bottom input. So the streaks, it's like, it's way too heavy. So I just wanna go to like a 0.2 or something like that. Really, really subtle, even lower, goodness. It's, yeah, it's really heavy, this streak. I don't know why it is so bright, but I never want it as bright as it is. Um, okay, and now to blend it with the original render for my final trick, I duplicate that, drop it in here, um, and put this into the bottom input, and I'll connect this to my viewer, um, and then let's set this to a one. By the way, so the composite Maybe I explain it. Anyway, the composite is gonna be what's saved into your render. The viewer is just gonna be what is displayed in your, your background here. So if you don't have something connected into the composite, it's not gonna be saved when you do uh, the render. Okay, but that's pretty good. So that's how we've got a very quick glare effect over everything. It's a little heavy. I might just drop it back a bit um, because we want it to be just, like just enough that you can see it, um, but not crazy. By the way, if you uh, want to zoom in in your backdrop, you can hit uh, V will shrink the size of it and Alt V will zoom in. They really need a better one. I, I agree, <laughs> I agree with that. Um, it's, uh, it, yeah, it, it definitely could be better. I think there's, oh, you can control it like that. Okay, so if you hit your viewer node, you've got these little, uh, okay, you can do it like that as well. But yeah, V and Alt V, it's like a keyboard shortcut from the old days of Blender and anyways. All right, um, dial it back. I don't wanna go too heavy. Like the, the, the thing with post-processing when you're doing stuff in the compositor is you can like, <laughs> you just get like uh, distracted. You just get like, um, like hypnotized by the effect. And it's so common to 
have a render that a beginner has done that's actually pretty solid, but then they have just really hammed up the post-processing effect. So don't do that. Don't get overly obsessed with it because um, it's almost certainly overkill. You just need to dial it back to like less than you're comfortable with and then it's probably right. Um, because whilst you're adding it, you get really excited. Um, anyways, that's what I found myself. The other thing I'll show you is uh, if we just bring up this bottom window, I don't know why Dope Sheet is the selected one, it makes no sense for the uh, compositing layout. But if you click the little drop down in the top left, change it to 3D viewport. And now in rendered mode, click the little drop down next to it and you should see at the bottom, you've got options for compositor. Mm. So let's click always. And what you'll see is that the compositing effects, what's happening up here is now being composed live over the top of your, your viewport. And this is a very new feature. I think it's actually 4.0 is when it was officially um, added in. Um, but it's it's huge because it means you can do and preview your effects whilst you're looking around your scene. So you could like, look at this, like, hey, I can see the exact amount of that glare that's coming off it. Um, you could do, you know, you can do crazy stuff in the compositing and it'll, it'll show through. Like as an example, there's a new uh, Kawahara uh, filter that looks like this kind of like painterly style. Um, and you can, uh, yeah, you can preview it like live in the 3D view. It's like, I feel like I'm looking at a painting right now, right? It's really crazy um, that they, that you can do this real time. So I'm, I'm really glad it's finally in there because it's been, uh, been talked about for like a year, I think was when it was first previewed. Um, so it's really cool that it's finally in here. So one thing I will use it for actually is to check that the threshold that I've set for the, the fog and the streaks is actually correct. So I'm gonna look through the, let's go to the streaks. I think streaks is pretty, it's a bit slow, but uh, anyways, let's pull in here. Um, and let's just take a look. I might have to add in a little bit. Okay, there we go. I have to add in a little bit of the original render so that I can actually see, but I just wanna make sure that it's mostly coming through on the metallic objects. So I might actually try increasing. So you can see as it's like all the way at zero, you're just getting everything is gonna get star beams. But then as I increase it slowly, 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 it starts to disappear. And then the only thing that's really getting it is those metallic objects. Um, and that's generally the look that I want to go for. So the, okay, so I went for a much higher amount threshold um, for that. Anyways, um, you could have a different amount for the, the glow, but I think it's generally one and the same effect. So I think they should have the same threshold. So I'm actually going to uh, just mouse over this and hit control C and then mouse over this and hit control V. So that's how you can uh, copy values. Let me just preview that. Yeah, the fog glow looks pretty good. Oh, it's on high. That's why it's going to be a little bit slow. If you set it to medium, I think it'd be a little bit more interactive. Um, but anyways, the GPU compositing, I'll say, is is very new. Um, as I mentioned, it's, it's this release. And it actually, for 4.0, the actual final render, like when you hit render and it creates the 2D image, um, it's actually still going to be using the CPU. Apparently in 4.1, maybe 4.2, it, it will change. It'll be fully GPU at that point. But until then, you will have like slightly longer render times just because of the compositor. Because the compositor is famously, has been famously slow in Blender for years. It's only just now that it's uh, it's being improved. So we're not really gonna do a lot with the composite. Like I really generally think you don't wanna go overkill. Um, you can just add too many like bells and whistles to the compositor. Um, but really like if you wanna do like drastic changes, you should try to do it in the scene unless you're doing something crazy like Spider-Verse in which case it's all stylized, right? Um, but try to do it in the scene because um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it can be more of like a crutch. You tend to like lean towards like, I'll fix it in the compositor. I'll improve it in the compositor and it doesn't. One thing you might want to add is underneath, uh, where is it, transform, lens distortion. Okay, if you add in this node, this can replicate an effect that is actually in all cameras as well, and that's lens distortion, all right? So you can see, uh, it actually makes more sense to actually see it on the 2D image. Um, so I'll put that in the background there. Um, but basically where the edges of a, uh, a shot. It's like if you take a photo with your iPhone on like a wide, it's most visible on like wider lenses, but the uh, straight vertical things start to look bent. Um, and it's just, it's barrel distortion and there's no way to get around it unless you use a uh, pinhole camera. Uh, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing, but it's, it's all because of the optics of the lens that bends the, the objects like that. Um, so anyways, it is in all objects. Uh, it does though, because it's a uh, 
like a post effect, it does kind of blow. So it's, it's like manipulating those pixels. So it means those pixels aren't going to be as sharp. So I generally don't like it for that reason. Um, but if you wanted to, you could add this. Just keep it really low, like a 0.1 amount with fit so that it doesn't get that, uh, you know, TV screen look on the edges. And then the other thing you could add is a little bit of chromatic aberration. Um, I'll show you just... Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is what that does. So you can see this is where it turned up a lot. You can see the edges of the objects, right? It has this kind of uh, the red and the cyan and the red and the yellow. It like towards the edges of it, it gets this, um, yeah, this kind of separation of the colors. And that is, again, a naturally occurring thing that happens with cameras because of the optics. Um, and the cheaper the optics, the cheaper the lens, the more likely it's to happen. Um, but it is there. I try not to use it because it can be very overused and very like, and it just makes it look cheap. Like, hey, this person just discovered there's the chromatic aberration. But if you are gonna use it, go really low, really low. Like, because actually this, you have to think of the story of the shot and someone has like framed this shot beautifully, got beautiful sunlight, right? This is a professional. Professional has taken this photograph of the donuts on the counter. They're not gonna be using a cheap lens. So although there might be some chromatic aberration, it'll be very, very uh, minimal. Um, but if you want that, um, you know what, I'll, I'll keep it in. Yeah, why not? We'll keep it in. Um, but yeah, that's basically what I'm gonna do for this. So this is my final node setup. If you'd like to copy it, have at it. The final thing I'll mention as well is if you want to disable your compositor, like say you're doing some renders and you don't, you just want to see it without the post-processing effects on top of it, um, rather than having to come in here and then like, you know, reconnect and disconnect a bunch of nodes. Um, instead, if you just go to your, what's that, the output property settings way at the bottom, you've got post-processing. So if you just uncheck compositing, that means you're only gonna be seeing the original render um, and then check it again and it's gonna be uh, kicking in whatever is uh, in your compositing settings. But that's it for this video. Click here to watch the next part and I will see you there.